Hi folks, it's me back again with another video. Now today in this video, I wanted to show you this all clad D5 3 quart sauté pan. Uh, so we'll have a good look at this pan and uh, we'll do a quick cooking test. Now at the end of last year, about three months ago, I actually moved uh, from Europe to New Zealand. And if you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll know that uh, I have a collection of the Meyer pans. And I'm happy that I managed to bring them back with me because, uh, quite frankly, the cookware situation in New Zealand is not that great. So good brands like the Meyer or Clad Le Creuset, they are very hard to find. And even if you can find them, uh, you'll be paying a very large premium compared to their usual uh, real retail prices, uh, you know, in the parts of the world where they are made. Uh, so let, let's take the Meyer for example. So with the Meyer now the Meyer, there is only one shop that sells them in Auckland, uh, but you have to pay at least around double or at least double of what you pay compared to Europe. Uh, and that's just the disadvantage of New Zealand being so far from the rest of the world that the retailers here, they have to pay a huge freight bill just to get them here. Uh, so, you know, if they want to make some money, they have no choice but to sell them at very inflated prices. You know, that's if they want to make us make a profit at all. And the situation with all clad is the same. Uh, you know, the brand in New Zealand is not represented at all. Um, there is one shop, there is one shop online, not even a physical shop. There's a shop online that sells them. But again, you have to pay around double or even more than double if you want to get your hands on them. Uh, I mean, you could also buy from Amazon is what I found. Um, but once again, you know, the prices are very high compared to what you would pay uh, in the US. So yeah, so in this video, um, I managed to pick up this um, brand new unused three quart saute from the D5 line from the local marketplace. Uh, the guy that sold it to me, he bought it from Amazon himself. Uh, so it's brand new, never used. Now this piece I bought for an equivalent of uh, 165 approximately US dollars, which is a great deal, especially considering it's in New Zealand. Now ideally I would have liked to get a D3. Um, I've never tried a D3 or D5 or basically anything from All Clad before. Um, so ideally I really wanted the D3, but uh, since you know this is New Zealand and All Clad is so hard to find, you just have to, well, pretty much take whatever you can get. Um, so I'm very happy that I managed to get this D5. So as most of you know, um, uh, actually, sorry for the camera, it's a bit shaky. I don't have a camera stand at the moment, so I'm just holding the camera with my hands. Now, as you probably know, All Clad has both the D5 and the D3 product lines, right? So I've got a couple of pictures, um, but I'm sure you've seen them before. So the main difference between the D5 and the D3 is that the D3 has a tri-ply construction. So that's three layers. So stainless steel, aluminum in the middle and stainless steel. And the D5 has five layers. Okay, so the D5 has a layer of, it has an extra layer of stainless steel in the middle of the aluminum. But the total thickness of the D5 and the D3 are the same. Okay, so they're both 2.6 millimeters according to online resources. And actually, I'll just show you here. Um, if you take a look at the edge of this pan, you can, you know, uh, let's let the camera focus. Hey, come on. Yeah, oh. yeah. you can actually clearly see the layer of aluminum. Uh, sorry, the layer of stainless steel in the middle. Sorry, the, yeah, there we go. There's a better, um, there's a more clear picture. You can see that layer of stainless steel in the middle of the uh, two aluminum layers. So that's the D5, okay. So the D3 is the um, is the one that most people buy. And if you have a look at most uh, reviews, uh, they will say that the D3 is all you need. There is no real need for the D5. And when it comes to cooking with the D5, now it's supposed to diffuse heat more slowly than the D3. So in other words, it's a more forgiving pan. It gives you a little bit more time uh, or before the food burns. Uh, but... You know, to be honest, um, I haven't tried the D3 myself, so I'm not really sure, but I'm not sure that you will really notice a significant difference in, in real world real world usage between the D5 and the D3. And in terms of price, the D5 is, uh, from what I see on the All Clad website, it's approximately 20 to 25% more than the D3. So now, as usual, let's have a good look around the pan. So first of all, I gotta say the build quality is very high. Um, I'm quite impressed. This is... 
this is the first time I'm holding a you know a modern Orclan in my hand, and I'm pretty impressed with the with the build. Um, the pen it feels very it feels quite weighty. It's not as heavy as the Demire, um, but you know for just the average uh, three or five ply stainless steel pen, it feels quite weighty. It feels very sturdy. It's got good weight to it. Now the D5 has both brushed and polished options, um, and this one is brushed. This is the brushed version, as you can tell from the texture of the stainless steel. Hopefully you can see that on camera. Um, the handle is riveted. Um, so unlike the Demires I've got, which has welded handles, the handle has traditional rivets. Now, I find the handle okay. I mean, it's it's. I have to say, it's not a comfortable handle. A lot of people complain about this U shape, cup shape. Um, but personally, I found it. It's okay. It's not. It's not comfortable. It's not uncomfortable. It's. Uh, it's fairly. I'm fairly neutral about it. Um, the halber handle again. It's uh, riveted. Uh, very comfortable. Very wide. So very easy to hold. Um, yeah, so you know, overall, I'm quite impressed. At least just on this um, on this first impression. Now, people say, people say, all clad isn't what it used to be. Um, you know, it's got, so it's got the all clad three quart. Um, turn it this way, all clad D five stainless three quart made in the USA. Uh, yeah, pe people like people. You sometimes say these days that all clad isn't what it used to be um, compared to their old stuff. Um, but you know, with with this being the first time I'm holding a proper all clad modern all clad pen, I can't really make that comparison. So at least, you know, based on what I'm see here, what I see here, um, I'm quite impressed with the with this pen, and the lid it also feels very nice. You know, um, it's I I would still say compared to Demaya or Demela, the lid the Demela lid feels more premium. But even this lid, you know, from all clad, it feels very nice in the hand in the hand as well. Okay. Right now, let's go through some basic specification as we usually do. So this is a five ply pen. All right. So as as just mentioned, now the thickness is two point six millimeters officially, but I have to say it feels thicker than two point six. Um, let me just put the camera down. I'll just quickly have a look. Yeah. So if I put a Tape measure against the edge of this pen, it's really more like three millimeters, but um, yeah, the official is 2.6. Capacity is three quarts, so that's the US measurement, which uh, which is equivalent to 2.84 liters. Uh, the weight is, now all clear, they don't publish their weight, but the weight, uh, I I also don't have a scale, accurate scale here in, in this house at, in, at home. Um, but the weight, according to a couple of uh, online resources, is 2.3 kilograms, including the lid. Uh, the, the total length of this piece, uh, again, let me just put the camera down for a sec. Okay, the total length is 56 centimeters, and the total uh, width, so the diameter of edge to edge diameter, like this, of the pen itself, is 29 centimeters okay and the height not including the lid is let's see how how high is the pen once again just one second okay it's six and a half centimeters so the height of the um of the pen it's itself so in other words this is um you know it's a three quart pen or all, all clad it doesn't provide the Pen specifications in you know in on bit based on the width, um, but it's equivalent to a, a approximately a twenty eight centimeter saute pen. Okay, so if you want to use if you want to use metric metric measurements, and let's just do one last measurement here, and that's the flat bottom diameter. Okay, so the flat bottom diameter like this uh, in contact with the burner is approximately 22 and a half to 23 centimeters. Okay. All right, so onto the pricing. Now it's weird um, because, so the D5, it has both the brushed and the polished version. Uh, the, the brushed version, which is what I've got here, retails for official retail price on the All Clad website is 249 US dollars. And for some reason, the polished version is two ninety nine. So I'm not sure why, why there's such a big fifty dollar difference. Um, 
yeah, so I'm really not sure about that, why the polished version is, um, you know, so much more expensive than the brushed version. I mean, personally, I would go for the brushed because I think it looks better anyway with a brushed surface and also hides fingerprints better. Uh, but anyway, with a price, um, I would not recommend that you pay full price for this because, um, you know, quite often I see on all clay they have sales. So, you know, you should um, you should be able to get this pen for a much better deal without too much trouble. Uh, not only on Orchid, of course, and also in the many, many retailers um, that, are, uh, that are available in the U.S. Okay, so now we're going to do, a, well, not now, but um, tomorrow, I'm going to do a little cooking test um, and to see how this pen performs on a smaller burner. Uh, so that's really what I'm interested in because... Unfortunately, the burner I've got at home is a ceramic electric uh, hob. It's it's only about that big. Okay, so there's about two centimeters um, of of the of the diameter that's not covered by the burner. So I'm very interested to see how well it distributes the heat um, on on a smaller burner. So I'm going to be measuring the temperature at the center, and I'm going to be measuring the temperature close to the edge to see how much of a difference of a temperature difference there is uh, on the burner that I have uh, which is a little bit smaller than 20 centimeters okay so unfortunately yeah it's not a it's not an ideal match for the bottom of this pan but that's what I've got to work with at the moment so let's do the cooking test and let's see how that goes okay so how did the cooking test go well first of all I said the hob the burner was 20 centimeters um, but the actual uh, element inside the burner is even smaller than that uh, so this is the burner that I was using which uh, this itself is 20 which is already quite small but the actual burner inside is even smaller um, so which made it even less ideal now because of the small size of the of the burner uh, I, I did not expect to get perfectly even heat distribution okay so I knew that the edge of the pan would be cooler than the center of the pan so as the pan was heating up, now I did the test like you know I've done previously. I measured the temperature at the center and I measured the temperature closer to the edge. Uh, it, now initially, I have to say I was a little bit disappointed. Um, the center temperature here was around a, when, when it was around 180. One corner, maybe this corner or that corner, I can't remember, was at around 160. Now that wasn't too bad. But the other two corners were significantly cooler, okay? So they showed a temperature difference of about 45 degrees. Now, like I said, I wasn't because of the small hop, I was not expecting a perfect temperature distribution, but still I was hoping um, for a little bit better than that. Now, the next step was um, to brown the beef. Sorry, I, I, was, I, I, I forgot to say I made a ragu, so it was like a pasta sauce or ragu with beef and tomato sauce. Uh, so the next step was to brown the beef. Now I brown the beef in two batches to avoid overcrowding the pan. So now as you can see here, in the first batch the browning was a little uneven. Okay, so the pieces at the center, uh, they browned quite well, but the ones towards the edge away from the center didn't quite get the same browning effect. Now the second batch, uh, I put the meat close to the center, so the second batch was, was better, was much better. Uh, so the meat was closer to the center and the ground up, as you can see here, much nice, much nice, much more nicely than the first batch. Now, if I was to compare the searing performance on this uh, on this hop um, with the D5 and um, and the Demeyer Proline, for example, so this is the Proline 24 centimeter. Uh, the Proline definitely does a much better job uh, than the this D5 or clad. Okay. And that's just because the proline is so much more thicker uh, than the oil clad, as you can see here, which means it just has a lot more thermal mass, um, you know, when it comes to browning the meat. Sorry, it's out of focus. And the searing is just much better on the uh, on the proline. But then again, if I had a cob that if I had a burner uh, that that was, um, you know, that that match the size of this pen better then I, of course I would expect the browning performance to searing performance to be better as well okay All right so next I simmer the sauce for about two and a half hours uh, and I took a couple of shots at various stages of the simmering now as you can see at the beginning uh, the bubbles were mostly concentrated at the center with uh, almost no bubbling 
no bubbling around the edge of the pan, which which um, I was kind of hoping for. Um, but as time goes on, it got slightly better. Okay, so the bubble started to develop around the edges, um, but still not as intense as the center, as you can see here. So overall, look, I would say this pan performed well under the circumstances. Okay, so the small burner did not allow the pan to perform at its full potential. Uh, but still, you know, it produced a very tasty pot of uh, ragu. Now, the one last thing I would say in this section is that if you are planning to make a big batch of something like a stew or ragu or sauce, tomato sauce, whatever, it is still better to actually do it in a taller casserole um, or Dutch oven or something like that. Um, and that's just because the volume of this, of this pan isn't that great. So, you know, when I was making the ragu, after I add the tomato sauce, the the meat, uh, sorry, the meat, the tomato sauce, and you know the stock, um, I almost, I actually almost ran out of room. Okay, so you know, I I, I literally had no room left. It was r almost right to the edge. Um, so you know, so yeah, if you're gonna do a big batch of something, I would still recommend a pot that has uh, has more volume. Now onto a couple of things that I dislike about this pan, or a couple of things that I think uh, all clay could do better. Now the first is that uh, they don't seal the edges uh, like some other brands. As, as you can see here, the edges are not sealed, uh, whereas the edges on the Demai Pro line, for example, is is sealed. And you know, I just think, I just think, um, I, I don't know for some reason it's having trouble focusing on the Pro line. There we go. Uh, maybe it's a little bit better. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, well, okay, as you can see here, the edges are sealed on the pro line. Um, I just think, you know, for this sort of price range, uh, price point, uh, they, they really should give us sealed edges. Now, the second thing I think this pan could do better is that, well, this pan is quite shallow, you know, for a saute pan, um, it's a little bit shallow. So I, I do wish the sides were, you know, maybe a half a centimeter taller. Um, you know, for a 28 centimeter saute pan, which this is equivalent to a 28 centimeter saute pan, the volume of this pan isn't really that great. It's only about 2.8 liters, okay? Um, because with a saute pan, you are mostly working with liquids, or quite often you are working with liquids, it would, be, it would help if the sides were just a little bit taller than what it is right now, okay? Now, finally, on to the conclusion. So two things I want to say in this summary. Now, first of all, should you buy this pan? Well, the answer is yes, you should buy it. This is a very high quality product and I would highly recommend it. But I would say that, like I said in the pricing section, don't buy at full retail, okay? Because then you're kind of ripping yourself off. Now, I'm always a bargain hunter and I never like to pay full price for anything, okay? So I'm I'm sure that, you know, if you just shop around for a better deal or just be a bit pay, patient with the All Claire website, you can get a significantly better deal than the official retail price. Now, also, in my opinion, it really doesn't matter if you can get the D5 or the D3, okay? I just, I think they are going to perform very similar. Um, you know, if you can get a good deal on the D3, then get a D3. If you can get a good deal on the D5, then just go for a D5, okay? I really don't think it, that it really matters that much. Now, the second part of this conclusion is in regards to the performance, um, you know, of this pan, like I did with the cooking test on a smaller burner. Now you gotta keep in mind that all of these manufacturers, all Clay, Demeyer, whatever other brands, they will always claim that their three ply, five ply, seven ply pans are going to give you that perfect heat distribution. But we gotta understand that um, the fact is, unless you have the equipment at home to back it up, so in other words, you have a suitably sized hob or suitably sized burner, the pan will not perform to its full potential like we saw here in this cooking test right so now i understand as you know it's it's impossible to get a perfect mesh every time everybody's got a different stove everybody's got a different hob um, the burner sizes on on the hobs are going to be different um, but it's still something to keep in mind when you want to buy a particular pen okay you got to have a think about you know am i going to get the best potential best performance out of this pen with the with the equipment that I have at home. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. I think it's a bit longer than uh, my other videos just because, well, this is the first time I'm properly reviewing an all-clad pen. Um,
But anyway, I hope this has been helpful and I will see you in the next video.